Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are on a planet of desolation and utter ruin, awaiting the return of your comrades to carry you to safety. While the remains of life about you, crawling and evil, are slowly hemming you in and ruthlessly tracking you down to your death. Listen now as Escape brings you Charles Smith's unusual story, North of Polaris. Testing. One, two, three, four. Will you read me, Joe? Loud and clear. R5S5. All ready, sir. How is he? Well, how do you feel, Mac? Scared, sir. Now take your time out there. Be very sure. Quiet. Can you see him? Uh, not yet, sir. Uh, yes, sir, there he is. Mac, what's it like out there? Nothing much to see. You feel heavier or lighter than usual? Can you move about easily? Just like at home. What about atmosphere? I'm turning off my oxygen unit and opening the intake valve. Careful. Not too fast now. I've cut my supply completely, sir. Rescue party standing by, sir. Uh, it, it seems to be okay. Yes, sir, the air is good. Are you sure? It's okay. Send them out. From the port of the spaceship, we could see him calmly walking about on the surface of a planet approximately 20 million miles from our own. All 40 of us had drawn straws. Mac at one. And if we returned home safely, he would be remembered as the first man to touch the soil of an alien planet. Well, Joe? Well, I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be, sir. Who else are you taking with you? Uh, Stoner. He's good with the camera. Sam, have you got your gear to ready? Joe, what's that for the thing? All right. Now, you know what to do. What I want. Yes, sir. Map the area as best you can. Bring me a report on water sources, mineral deposits, vegetation. And if you see any signs of life... Try to get pictures. But otherwise, avoid it. You can tell the others that's an order. Yes, sir. Do, uh, do you think there is life here, sir? Well, some of our best minds have always claimed there was. <laughs> well, when we get back, we'll set them straight, sir. <laughs> yeah. I'll make our other drops and pick you up at this spot in 48 hours. So you're on your own. Good luck, Joe. Thank you, sir. Uh, Joe, do you, you notice anything wrong with this place? What do you mean, Mac? Well, look around. You see any trees, bushes, grass, anything growing? You see anything green? Yeah, that's right. Well, it's probably desert country. No, no, uh, look here. You feel the soil. What? It's rich enough. Gets plenty of sun, probably plenty of rain. Look at its color. Gray, dead. Maybe it's like the moon. Maybe this is just another moon. No, no, there's air here. There isn't any on the moon. How you know? You ever been there? Well, that's what they say, Sam. Sometimes they're wrong. Well, what now? Well, we've got about five hours of daylight left. We'll head north. 
Uh, I don't like it. It's too quiet. Not even the wind. What are you trying to do, Mac? Don't you think we're jumpy enough? How long are they going to leave us here? Forty-eight hours. That could be a long time. We started north. It was easy walking over the flat rolling land, easy because there were no trees or bushes or weeds. There was nothing. Nothing but the gray sky and the gray dead soil. I was beginning to think that maybe it was only a moon. And then we made camp for the night. Okay, come and get it. Well, look here. Beans and K-ration. Just what I wanted. Oh. Hey, watch your skins are hot. Now you tell me. Uh, you know the first thing I'm going to do when I get home? Oh, what? I'm going in the best restaurant in town and order the biggest steak in the joint. You're pretty sure you're going to get home, aren't you? Sure, I'm sure. Why aren't you, Mac? I don't know. Hey, want some coffee, Joe? Yeah, yeah, thanks. You married, Mac? Uh-huh. Any kids? Yeah, one, a little girl. She's five. Ah. What makes you volunteer for this trip? I don't know. Um, maybe I just had to. You understand that? Yeah, I think so. Hey, you know what I miss? The crickets. You know, at home you sit around a campfire, like at the lake. You hear the frogs and the crickets. <laughs> and slap the mosquitoes. Yeah. It's funny. Oh, what's that? Well, well here, here we are, 20 million miles away from our home. 20 million miles. And yet up there in the sky... We can still see it. Yeah, I wonder if anybody's looking at this stinking planet and wondering if we made it. Oh, sure they are. All the scientists, astronomers. I don't mean them. I mean... I know what you mean. You got a family, Sam? Only my mother. She lives... She lives... Hmm? What... What is it? Something's out there. Moving. It was life. There was life here. And we could see it now, in the dim light given off by our heating unit. It was an ugly, four-legged beast with a hairless body. And from its odor, a scavenger. Like everything else here, it was the color of gray. Get out! Get out! Get out! All right, all right, cut it out. Sam! Oh, that's real smart. You're supposed to be a photographer. Take pictures of what we find. Oh, lay here. off him, Joe. It was only a rat, a big rat. The day broke clean and bright. And we kept walking north doing the job we'd set out to do. And there were no other signs of life. And we'd almost convinced ourselves that the rat had been a stowaway from our ship. For the first time, things felt right. Hey, Joe. What? Hold it. Uh, stop wasting that film. What's the matter? Don't you want your picture in the magazines? I've shot everything there is. You shoot here. It's all going to look the same. Nothing. Yeah, I know. When we turn him back? Tomorrow morning. Uh, there. Now, let's take a look around. What's the use? There's nothing to see. Hey, why don't we start back now? Joe? Joe. Mac, come up here. What is it? On the double. Now take a look through these binoculars, Sam. Off to the east there. What do you see? Um, a lake. Yeah, maybe an ocean. Now swing around slowly to your left. No, easy. There. What do you make of that? I don't know. Well, what's up? Looks like clumps of stone or cement. Uh, take a look. Give him the glasses, sir. Yeah. Hey, could that be what's left of a city? If it is. If we've found... Yeah! Yeah! Stop Sam! Sam, you fool! Come back here! But he wasn't coming back. Not now. He'd found a subject for his camera and he was racing toward it. At the edge of the sprawling stone ruins we caught up. And he made us turn with our backs to the city. 
and pointed his camera at us. Welcome to the city. Hold it, both of you, right there. I should have shaved. Hey, Mac, pick up a piece of that stone. I uh, like this. Okay. Come on, what are you waiting for? Hold it. Mac, put that stone down. Hey, you think... Just I... put it down. What's the matter with you guys? Geiger counter's acting up. Are you kidding? What could be radioactive around here? Mac, lower it near the ground. Well, what do you know? Radioactive? What is it, uranium? Pitch blood? What? No. Now, this isn't a natural composition. Yeah, then what? Look around you. Take a good look. What's it look like? Just stone, cement of ruins. What else? Look at the color of it. The edges. Yeah. Like it's been burnt. Scorched. Remember what our cities looked like? Uh, they wouldn't know about atomic energy here. What makes you so sure? I led them on into the sprawling corpse of the great metropolis... So we stood near the jagged base of what once must have been a magnificent building. Mac? Yeah? Over there. What? The rats. Yeah. Scrounging for food. Well, they sure did. With each step we'd taken, the radiation had increased. And when it reached the danger point, we turned and started slowly back. We didn't say anything. We didn't need to. We had seen and we knew that this world, this civilization, had committed suicide. Uh, it's getting late. We'd better make camp. Well, this is as good a place as any, I guess. Oh. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pooped. Yeah, it's been a long day. You want to set up the stove, Mac? Yeah, might as well. The sky's clouding up in the south. Looks like a storm, bro. Uh, your film's safe, Sam. You think the radiation back there damaged it? No, nah, it's packed in heavy lead for it. Yeah. Cigarette, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hmm. That's funny. No, what's that? Take a look out there. You no, know, south, I mean. It's not the sky that's clouding up. It looks like dust. Dust storm. Couldn't be. There's no wind. Take a look. Yeah, but there's no wind. Well, something's out there kicking up the dust. How far away you figure? It's hard to tell. Ten, maybe fifteen miles. Joe! Joe, look! What? There, to the right, about a mile. You see him? See what? No, no, no. Over to your left. Well, well what is it? People. You're crazy. There's nothing out there. Two of them. They fell. I can't see them now either, but I did see them. There, now they're up again. Joe, he's right. The people like us. Hey! Oh, hey! All right, stop hey! it. Hey! Oh, hey! Stop it! Joe. Look, we've got orders to avoid contact with life here. But, Joe, they're people, human beings. You don't know what they are. Just because they resemble us physically, that doesn't mean a thing. But, Joe, we've got I... our orders. The ground's higher over there. Let's move over there where we can see them better. Come on. When we made it to the rise, we could see a man and a woman. Two people just like ourselves. Even what was left of their clothing was similar to ours. And they were running desperately. And then I looked beyond them and saw the cause of their fear. Stalking them, slowly closing the distance between them, were six of those great evil rats. We stood there silently, watching the hunters and the hunted. And the longer we watched, the more it became certain that the rats could end the hunt whenever they wanted to. I could see their features now. The woman was much younger than the man. Their faces were distorted by panic and fear. And we watched and waited. And then the old man fell, and Sam and Mac were running, screaming, driving off the rats. Uh, are you all right? Uh, can you understand me? Yes. Where's my father? I must go back to him. Uh, the boys are with him. It's all right. You, you speak our language. Yes. But we were sure there wasn't anyone else in this sector. We thought they'd all gone. Gone where? 
south. They left us behind. They said he was too old, not worth the trouble. How many of you lived here? Eleven of us. Only eleven? Father and I started out yesterday morning. We thought we could meet them later. And then the rats... Where are you from? Outside. Then there is something left outside. Oh, yes. Oh, I was sure. I'd hoped. I knew it couldn't end here. Come on, we'd better get you back to camp now. Well, they're asleep. Gave them a set of it. She'll be all right, but I'm worried about the old man. Hey, Joe? Yeah? We've been talking. How can they know our language? How? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's like our world, isn't it? After the atomic war, I mean. Yeah. I remember reading how the radioactive dust spread all over the land, killing everything. Grass, trees, animals, everything. Well, I guess the same thing happened here. You, you off your rocket, Joe, with 20 million miles apart. And our war was over 50 years ago. Look, don't you think it's possible that life on another planet could have started, advanced, and progressed step by step with ours? Oh, Joe, now you're talking like something out of one of those science fiction magazines. Well, well what's the matter? Can't, can't your ego accept it? Do we have to be the greatest, the super beings? Everything else in the universe is subhuman? Oh, wait a minute, Joe. Oh, knock it off. Let's hit the sack. Okay. It might be a good idea if one of us stood watch while the other two slept. How about it? Huh? Sure. Well, I'll take the first lap and then you, Sam, and then Mac. Each of us will do three hours, huh? Yeah. Now try to get some sleep. The three hours passed quickly. My mind was racing, asking if this world was a parallel to our own world. Were all the worlds of the universe alike? I was trying to find the answer when Sam relieved me, and I still hadn't found it when I dropped off to sleep. But I didn't sleep very long. Oh, good Lord, the rats. He must have dozed off. Come on. Oh. Look. Oh, my. We buried Sam just as the sun rose full above the horizon. And then as we turned to walk back to camp, we saw it. The sky to the south was black with dust. It was closer now, much closer than the day before. And whatever it was out there was moving straight for us. What do you make of it, Joe? I don't know. Oh, uh, Jean. Yes? Uh, does your father feel well enough to travel? Oh, he's much better. He wants to talk to you. All right. Joe, how far are we from our rendezvous point? Oh, about 12 miles. Have you noticed the dust to the south? Yes. I, uh, I was hoping that you could tell us what it was, sir. It is the army. The what? The army. The great army of the rats. The others. Those you saw yesterday and this morning. They were the scouts. Out there is the main force. Well, why only rats? Why no other animals? When, when the war started, the rats were already immune to radiation. They thrived on it. When all other lives perished. But why? We did it. We made them immune. We used them in our early atomic experiments. Generation after generation. And 
Generation by generation, their resistance increased until a rat was born who was immune to radiation. What are we waiting for? Let's get out of here. Yes, we must run. And now they are the masters, the rulers, and we are the scavengers. <laughs> Well, if he can't keep up, hold it. All right, hold up. Oh, there's no use going on. Look there ahead of us. Yeah, dust. More of them. Behind us. To the north. Yeah, they've cut us off. Now they close in for the kill. I told you it was an efficient army. Their strategy is well planned. They have a good general. As good a man as myself. Father... Please try. Oh, now, now. These young men need me, Jean. We're outnumbered. We need time to muster our forces. Perhaps we could make a truce with the rats. Talk sense, will you? Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, be reasonable. We have no other choice. You see how easily they outmaneuvered us? A truce is our only hope. Make him shut up. Joe, he's crazy. He talks crazy. Don't let him get you, man. How much time we got left before they pick us up? Seven hours. We'll never make it. Uh, Jean. Yes? Do you know this sector? Oh, yes. yes. Well, come with me, please. Uh, Mac, keep an eye on the old man. I didn't know what I was looking for or what I expected to find, but I had to do something. Even walking aimlessly over the scorched stone rubble was better than standing, waiting for the circle of rats to close in. And then Jean found it, an entrance to an underground bomb shelter, one just large enough to hold the average family. We raced back to where we'd left the others, and now we could hear the rats, thousands of them all around us. Joe, Joe, I tried to stop him. He wouldn't listen. He was like crazy. What, what do you know? I couldn't help it. Believe me, I Father! couldn't help it. about 200 yards away, his shoulders back, his head held high, walking directly toward the rats, and in his right hand he was holding a small white handkerchief, waving it back and forth like a flag of truce. He kept on until they formed a semicircle around it, and then he stopped, and all around us the rats stopped. For a moment I swear he spoke to them, and then he turned toward us raised his hand in salute. And then the rats swarmed all over him. Come on! Gordon! No, come on, come on, Jean, you can't help me. Come on! We burrowed ourselves in the shelter. In a few moments, we could hear them overhead hurtling themselves against the heavy, lead-lined door, their yellow teeth digging at the concrete and steel. But it had been built to stand an atomic blast. It held off the rats. And we waited. For one thing, how long could we stay alive in that coffin? We didn't speak. We just sat there, wondering when they'd break through. So... Yeah. What's the use? Let's get it over. No. No, they'll give up. They're starving. They leave to find some other food. Quitting the leaving. Uh, maybe they are. Maybe they just want us to think they are. No. No, they're leaving. I'm going to take a look. Mac, don't open that door. Joe, they're... Now listen. Listen, it's a ship. Clark and the ship. Come on, Joe. Let's get out of here. Open it and see us. Hey! Hey! Down here! Hey! Well, Jean, we can go out now. They've gone. What? It's all over. We're safe now. We can go out. Out? 
out. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> We're going to take you back with us. Away from this. Now, come on. Oh, no, please. Please, I'm afraid. Afraid? Don't you hear it? That noise? Well, that's our ship. Here, I'll show you. Look, you see the landing. Ship? I don't understand. But the one that brought us here. Brought you here? Yes. Where, where did it come from? Europe? Asia? Where? Europe? Asia? Oh, I knew we hadn't destroyed all of the Earth. Earth? Is that what you call this planet? Earth? This is the Earth. You. Where are you from? What? Way up there. Just north of Polaris. Under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you North of Polaris by Charles Smith, starring William Conrad as Joe, with High Aberback as Mac, and Eddie Firestone as Sam. Featured in the cast were Vivi Janis, Ralph Moody, and Frank Gerstel. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens.